In this video, I would like to give you some pieces of information about non-fictional texts, Sachtexte, Gebrauchstexte. What are non-fictional texts and um, how to analyze them? Non-fictional texts are based on facts, whereas fictional texts like novels or short stories are products of the imagination. They are made up. They may refer to reality, to the world of facts, but basically there are made up products of the imagination. There are very, very many different types of non-fictional texts. I'm going to show you a list later. Those non-fictional texts may have different purposes and they are targeted at many different audiences. Here you can see uh, a list of different types of non-fictional texts. I copied this list from Wikipedia. You can have a look at it. You see things like book report, like diary, um, science book, scientific papers, autobiographies, letters, and so on. Here's a less intimidating list uh, from the website Bite Size by the BBC. Here you see some of the uh, non-fictional text types that you, that we will have to uh, work with and deal with uh, in our English lessons and in the exam. For example, uh, reviews, recensionen, letters, diaries and blogs different kinds of articles, newspaper articles, magazine articles, feature articles. There is travel writing. We won't have to deal with that in class, but um, it's a, a type of non-fictional text. Because there are so many um, different types of non-fictional texts and so many different audiences, there can be very many different purposes, Absichten und Zwecke. I picked uh, three of them. Very often the purpose of a non-fictional text is to give information, so the purpose is informative. It offers information, facts or data. Many Non-fictional texts uh, try to be persuasive. They want you as a reader or as a listener to agree with the opinions or positions uh, of the author. And non-fictional texts can be mainly argumentative. That doesn't mean that the author tries to argue, streiten. It just means that he or she presents different arguments, different sides to an issue, pros and cons, upsides and downsides, downsides and so on. Um, very often um, there is more than one purpose in a single non-fictional text. text. The author can give you some information and he tries to persuade you of something. Or he gives you information and he presents um, arguments that uh, show different sides of an issue. So very often there is more than one purpose in one single non-fictional text. Likewise, there are very many different kinds of audiences. There can be a general audience, just about everyone that is a general audience. Then some non-fictional texts are aimed at lay persons who are interested in a particular topic. Maybe they are interested in science, in physics, in biology, or they are interested in the arts. Um, but they are not experts, they are lay persons, laien. Another audience can be experts. Or the audience can consist of mainly or only old or young people. They can be your customers. They can be fans of 
a club, of a person, of a, um, of a band, whatever. And sometimes audiences can be people who share the same attitudes or opinions or needs. So audiences, audiences can um, differ um, and the author needs to have his or her audience in, at the back of his mind to be able to um, inform, persuade or um, give them arguments, pros and cons. Now, how do we analyze a non-fictional text? Um, basically, there are three elements which uh, are important elements in every non-fictional text. Um, the first element or one element, let's start with uh, the content or the topic of the text. Then the text will have a structure, Aufbau oder Gliederung. And of course, since we are talking about words here, um, there will be, there's the element of language. And these three elements, they work together. They co-create the message and the purpose of the text. In other words, they interact, they work together. Um, you can't just say something. Of course, you have to try and uh, be clear what you're talking about at um, a specific um, passage in, in, your, in your essay or in your comment about this text. But basically, you have to deal with all three of them. Um, to uh, be able to make somebody, make your reader understand what this text is about and how the author um, goes about the business of informing you, persuading you, or giving you, presenting you with argu arguments. Okay. Um, I have already said that, that, that there is a vast amount of different non-fictional text types. What I tell you now about how to analyze a non-fictional text has in mind an article, a newspaper article or a magazine article. Basically, um, you can, but basically you can use this for, use these hints for very different types uh, of non-fictional texts. But very often in your exam, in class, in your textbooks, uh, there will be articles of some kind that you have to deal with. Okay, um, you can start with checking if there is a source given when you want to um, find out or identify the text type, because that would be a useful thing to start with, identify the text type. What kind of text is it? Okay, and there you can start with checking if there is a source given. Maybe there is the name of a newspaper, of a magazine, of a website, or an encyclopedia, and you have a first hint of what this, uh, this non-fictional text uh, could be. Next, you can try to identify structural or formal elements which are easily recognizable. You don't have to... Uh, read the text closely, uh, you can just uh, scan it and uh, you will see some of those um, formal or structural elements. For example, in an article, or you can, you can look for a header, heading, headline, one of those three words, they mean, mean the same thing. Sometimes there is a lead, ein Vorspann, which very briefly answers the question who, what, when, where, how. Then maybe there is a byline with the name of the author. Text was written by and then the name. And very often in articles there is there are subheadings, Zwischenüberschriften, which help the readers um, to follow the text and uh, to understand what the next part, the next section, the next passage or paragraph will be about. And when some or all of these elements are there, 
then probably this uh, text in front of you is a news item, eine Nachricht, or a newspaper or magazine article. On the other hand, if you find a list of ingredients, uh, apples, flour, whatever, um, and some instructions what to do with them, then it's um, probably not an article, a newspaper article, it will be a cooking recipe, which is a non-fictional text type as well. Next, you can use reading techniques like scanning or skimming uh, to, ad to identify the topic. What is it about? What is the text about? Of course, first and foremost, there is the heading or the headline, which will offer a clue, hopefully. Um, then if there is a lead, Vorspann, what does it say? Uh, then in the first paragraph, there you could look for a lead question. Is uh, there a lead question which uh, the author tries to answer? Or is there a thesis statement, eine These? This is not the same thing because it's not in question form, but maybe he's, he uh, presents some kind of statement and the rest of the article, in the rest of the article he wants, he or she wants to verify that thesis statement. Okay, and then you should uh, analyze the arguments, if it is a newspaper article and so on, I already said that, in detail. What are the author's arguments? And how does the author connect them? How does he put them one after the other? And how? what are the links between those um, arguments? And this sequence of arguments is called the line of argument, the argumentationskette. Then it is important to find out how does he want to um, persuade you or present his arguments. How convincing is that? Are there uh, examples given? Is there some kind of evidence? Does he quote from um, other authors to support his own arguments? So this belongs to the uh, detail, to a detailed analysis. And then we come to the element of language. You already know how to analyze language from fictional texts like short stories or uh, novels. It's about the same thing. You have to analyze the choice of words. What kind of words does the author use? Are they formal or, or informal? That is a matter of style. Um, are there maybe even slang words in there or are they um, very difficult words like many specialized terms, Fachbegriffe? Then syntax, in German Satzbau, uh, are the sentences long and maybe complicated because there are um, lots of subclauses, Nebensätze, maybe even subclauses within subclauses, so very many different um, levels of syntax, or are, the, or are the sentences rather short, mainly main clauses, Hauptsätze, um, or is it a mix? Very often it will be it will be a mix, and um, then there is there are um, stylistic devices because stylistic devices are not only used in fictional text; they are used in um, non-fictional in many non-fictional text types as well. Uh, and uh, for example, very often you have enumerations, Aufzählung, anaphora and but even metaphors and um, things like that. So uh, with all those things, with the, all those different elements of the use of language, you should always look and analyze the effect. What effect do these long and complicated sentences have, for example? Okay. Now to finish this off, um, it's important to look uh, at the way the author wraps up his text or finishes his text. For example, is there a conclusion, Zusammenfassung, a résumé? And at the end, you should look again at the purpose. What is the main purpose uh, of this text? Is it mainly informative? Is it mainly persuasive? 
or mainly argumentative. And uh, as I said, very often is a, it's a mix. Okay, sometimes you are asked to um, evaluate uh, in how far the author has effectively achieved uh, this purpose. Um, and another important question could be, does the author really answer his lead question? Or does he verify his um, thesis statement? So um, when you're required to do that, uh, you know uh, that you what you have to look for and in order to answer this. Okay. So much for now. Ich hoffe, die Erklärungen waren hilfreich. Ich freue mich immer über Kommentare zu meinen Videos. Wer Interesse an dem Kanal hat, kann ihn hier abonnieren. Bis bald. Tschüss.